doubt, like what I call, I call it like a chronic doubt. So you will oftentimes find yourself doubting about almost everything. That's why you have to refuse to be caught up into imaginations, meaning thought of your mind that are not coming from God. Literally, you have, you have to refuse it. There is a time process in which you may feel or find yourself in so many adversities. Financial adversities, health adversities, marriage adversities, children adversities, family adversities, all kinds of adversities from business, from your work, from your studies, whatever. But remember, remember, adversities are not meant to destroy you. Remember that. Adversities are meant to glorify the name of God. Remember this one. Adversities are meant to give you a testimony. We got to remember that. When I say literally they are meant, it means the structure of adversity does not have any rule inside that can destroy a child of God. It is structured by God so that the, when even it happens, there is always a way out. Does it make sense? Let me spin it again. It is like a car. When a builder, a car maker does a car, he structures it with certain functionality inside. So sometimes they have what they call the uh, airbag. And the airbag is structured so that the, if anything happens, the airbag will deploy. Okay? So I'm trying to take that picture to explain to you a little bit how God works. When God, when, when the, the, the car maker structures the car, he's thinking already in the possibility of event where you will have a crash. You see what I'm saying? So the same car that carries you, that helps you, the structure is made with a prevention for a crash. So if a crash happens, there is an airbag inside that deploys and that attempts to protect you from being hurt by all kinds of different stuff. Hallelujah. So this is only a man-made. So if man can think this way, okay, if man can think on how to build something with a protective functionality inside, hallelujah, so God is much more above and higher to do so and better. Hallelujah. That's why he says, he will not allow you to be tempted beyond Amen? Your ability. So when the trial or the adversity comes, it comes because inside that adversity, it is built with something inside to honor God and to give you a testimony. So your frame of mind has to start now changing by saying, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. While it is ongoing, you want not to leave your heart being distressed. Because while you are distressing, you are also giving to yourself sickness. And by giving to yourself sickness, you will not be able to achieve properly when the time arrives and the time has caused that thing to pass. So it is important to remember that your God, one, does not allow anything that happens to you except that he gives you the ability to bear it. And if he gives you the ability to bear it, he also makes a way to get out, to escape. So your ability does not reduce, so that your strength does not fall down, so that your heart does not shatter. It gives you that ability. And he builds every form 
that has ever come to men that is called trial. He builds each one of them with the intent that they will bring fruit of testimony. So everything that is called a trial, inside there is testimony. However you call it. Everything that is called a trial, inside there is a testimony. Because the devil is unable to create anything. Hallelujah. Let me explain. The devil today is doing what he does. But even inside the devil, we have our testimony. How? The devil killed the Lord Jesus. And what happened? We are saved. Amen? So he doing that work, thinking he was able to cut short the life of Christ, he thought he was able to take down the purpose of God. He ended up finding himself helping the purpose of God. If you wouldn't have killed Christ, you and I wouldn't have been saved. Because there was a need for a bloodshed, a holy blood. So even the devil functionality, inside there is purpose. So every opposition, every adversities, every worries, every anxieties, every stress, every oppression, Remember, they are not allowed by God except inside our testimony. If it happens to you, then know it happens for the purpose of testimony. Rebuild your heart. Rebuild your mind. And continually tell to your heart, and your soul. My soul shall not forget all its benefit. You got to continually tell to your soul. You shall not forget all your benefit. Because inside of that soul. The Lord has implanted inside increase. He has implanted inside peace. Peace. But he has also implanted inside victory. So inside your soul, there is a form, a wire of victory. So when your mind and your heart are failing you, speak to your soul to not forget its benefit. When your mind and your heart are failing you. Speak to your soul to not forget its benefit. There is no trial that the Lord has allowed to happen in nobody's life except there is a testimony inside. If there is no testimony inside, the Lord doesn't allow it. If there is no testimony inside the trial, God will not allow it. So since there is a benefit inside, my heart may be perplexed. My mind may be perplexed. But my soul must not forget all its benefit. Because inside the perplexity, there is testimony. When the sheep I'm in those sheep wreck. I may lose the sheep. I will not lose my life. I may lose the sheep. I will not lose my life. It may happen that some winds and some storm are stronger. But listen, the ship that carried Paul went shipwreck only because they had to have possession in the island. So the possession they had in the island was added onto their lives and they were able to build another ship to carry on the
testimony. So regardless of the enemy activities, regardless of the enemy activities, trial does not come alone. Trial comes with testimony. Second, you ought to leave behind everything that turns into a pillar of salt. You have to leave it behind. You cannot look back. You cannot look back and regret. Because even if the choice at the time you made the choice were not a sound choice of God, I say there is no trial that is not formed with an exit. Hallelujah. So everything that has happened because of any choice you made, inside of it, there is testimony. Inside of it, there is an escape. Inside of it, there is the name of God. So you are to tell to your soul continually, you shall not forget all your benefits. Because the praise of the name of the Lord will not quench out of your heart simply because of the trial. The name of the Lord will not decrease because of any opposition. The name of the Lord will not decrease because of any adversity. The name of the Lord will not decrease because of any difficulties. The name of the Lord will always increase and will remain high. So the trial, remember, is built with testimony. When everything has passed, this trial too shall pass. But when that trial pass, it will leave a testimony. When that trial pass, it will leave possession. That trial will not pass and go along with the possession. No, it will pass and leave the possession. So the benefit of my soul is a possession that the trial leaves. The benefit of my soul is a testimony that the trial leaves. The benefit of my soul is the increase that the trial brings. Because the Lord said, I will not forsake thee. It means he will not forsake you. Because he said it. Somebody did not say it. Your spouse did not say it. Your father did not say it. Your mother did not say it. Your friend did not say it. God used his arm and he declared, I will not forsake thee nor leave thee. Sometimes you have to look the future with the reflection of the past that the past did not kill you. The past did not hold you there. The past did not prevent your age to continue to grow. Does it make sense? So do not look at where you at as a end, but look at where you at as a bridge to get you into the other side. No testimony comes alone without a trial. But no trial comes without testimony. So when it increases, then I know the benefit also increases. And I'm going to step back on this one with Joseph. The trial in the life of Joseph only increased. 
remember, the trial in the life of Joseph increased because the benefit was to be increased. If the trial of the life of Joseph would have been stayed into the pit, he would have died out of famine. Listen, he would have died, he and his family, because famine was ahead. If the woman, the wife of Potiphar, did not lie on him to send him to jail, he wouldn't have met the one who stand before Pharaoh. Because the one who stand before Pharaoh, the butler, wouldn't have met him into the house of Potiphar. Because being a butler, he would do nothing with a slave. Are you following? Being a butler, he will not address to a slave. But Joseph, being brought into that jail, that butler had to meet him into that jail. That jail was not a place to hold Joseph. It was not a place to hold Joseph, Joseph's life. It was not a place to decrease him. It was a place to increase him. Please remember that. It was not a place to bring him down. It was a place to bring him up. The battler was on the radar, radar to go in jail. But God was also in the radar to increase Joseph. So he had to get them meet somewhere. Hallelujah. If the battler was a battler and has never gone to jail, and Joseph was just a slave and never had gone to jail, that we have never meet, met. Hallelujah. So your trial is a place of meeting your elevation. Listen, your trial is a place of meeting your increase. You have to tell to your soul, you shall not forget all your benefits. While Joseph was inside the jail, God has spoken in the soul of Joseph to increase. So he will be taken in command. It's not because he was in the jail that the increase of God in the life of Joseph finished. No, it was awaiting for him. It was not because Joseph was limited in the jail that uh, the plans of God for the life of Joseph was discarded. No, no, no. It was awaiting for him. When we say, my soul shall not forget all his benefit, he also means that uh, you ought not to allow yourself to hurt yourself and to die in the jail. Because if your soul leaves you, then all the benefit also left. So my soul, I will not allow my soul to die and to live. Because there are benefits that the Lord has designed into every trial. Each one of them will increase me. I say, each one of them will increase me. Because they are wired for increase. And none of them shall decrease you. They are wired for increase. So I will not let my heart bring despair, even if I'm perplexed. I will not let my mind bring distraction, even if I am oppressed from every side. Every pressure I feel from every side, I will not let my mind bring me distraction. Every perplexity that I feel from every side, I will not let my heart bring me into despair because there is a benefit 
that the Lord has placed and planted into my soul. It must increase. It must increase. Every darkness of trial is a ground for everything to grow. Because without the darkness of the ground, no seed will ever grow. So every dark place that you ever felt, that you ever feel, every dark window, every dark thing that you ever feel, you must know, without the darkness of the ground, no seed ever grow. So nothing is dying in your life. Hallelujah. It's only being repurposed. Nothing is dying in your life. It's only being repurposed. For there is an appointed time to die. There is an appointed time to rise. So the appointed time is that the seed of God goes down and dies. So that the life of God in you goes up and shines. So there is nothing in your life that is called a trial that is meant to take you out. There is nothing in your life that is called a trial as is meant to take you out. Every benefit of your soul shall be met. Every benefit of your soul shall be met. And now, the third thing. In the United States, God will bring to you and show you where to find help and the type of help that is needed to get you on the other side. There is a ship and there is a boat. There is a wood that you will receive in order to rebuild your ship that will shipwreck. Does it make sense? I'm speaking parabolically. Because God has resources and he has his people. And he also had, above all things, the ability to turn the heart of the wicked. He has the ability to turn the heart of the wicked to bless you. So do not let your soul forget none of its benefit. When it becomes hard, when it becomes tougher, when it becomes very perplexing, when you don't understand why, that's the moment to realize that the testimony is greater. Joseph was perplexed. Joseph was oppressed from every side. Joseph was compressed with every lie. After serving so faithfully, Potiphar, and honoring him, he was left with the hurt. The more he honored Potiphar, the more the hurt was done to him. But it did not come without a benefit. The more Joseph helped his father, the more his brother hated him. It did not come without a benefit. Because at the end of the day, the Bible said they all changed their mind. Hallelujah. They all bound down. So I will not go out. My soul shall not. Go out until the Lord has made your enemies a fool before you. Hallelujah. So do not let your soul forget none is benefit. Every trial is wired, is built, is designed, has an architecture of a testimony. Father, we bless your holy name, Lord God, for having given us uh, the purpose today to understand your will. 
to seek your will, to grab your will, to hold on your will. It is you who have prepared a place for us. It is you who have built your people. It is you who are never leaving nor forsaking us. I pray for each one of your children. I pray, Lord Jesus, that every place of darkness, every place of trial, every place of hurt, every place of adversity, every place of lack, every place of need is met with every benefit of the soul of each one of them. I pray, Lord God, that uh, you put your finger on it and you move it because everything, Lord God, that is darkness, that is shadow, will not hold no seed that uh, you have planted in their life. They will grow, they will germinate, and they will light up in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.